Nobody understood the complexities of Hindu, Hinduism. Of what the many kinds of Hinduism existed. Religion. Again, one of the great success stories was many, many, many stories on religion itself. He understood that these were the, uh, the, the new knowledge bases that were in demand. Because people wanted to know, you know, 1947 was not that far away. Also, he was editor in perhaps India's most dramatic ticket. I, I don't know when which year he became editor, 68, 69, maybe? 69. 69. So if you look at 69 to 79, uh, 78, 79, it was the most dramatic decade of change. 69 collapse of governance all over the country. 1967 was the very first election in which the ruling party of Delhi uh, lost elections from Amritsar to Bengal and was replaced by coalition politics which were both frightening and hilarious. 1971, the high of liberation of Bangladesh. 65, War, 60, uh, 71, liberation of Bangladesh. Very, I mean, India in the throes of an excitement that must have come about only between 1945 and 1949. But the f excitement of 1945 and 49 was deeply, deeply flawed. Deeply flawed by partition and its extraordinarily horrible consequences. A consequences paid in blood by. It was not the blood of armies that we remember that by, but the blood of people. And this period, Kushant was the perfect, absolutely the perfect uh, narrator, editor, as well. And now let me tell you something about him which is not known. He was a great reporter. He was the first, or maybe Frank Morris, maybe Frank Morris. But then Frank Morris's reporting was really from an editorial couch uh, also, although he, you know, which is why he got uh, the 1971 election so badly wrong. But the but Kushwitz is a great reporter. Why does nobody mention the fact that he was... I Research papers on agrarian uh, and urban history, Punjab and Sikh history, religious movements, gender relations, history and literature, historical method and historiography, she has authored and edited over 15 books, notably Agrarian System of the Sikhs, Causation in History, Ports and Their Interlands in India, Five Punjabi Centuries, The City in Indian History, Cultural Reorientation in Modern India and the Gadar Movement, Background, Ideology, Action and Legacies. Professor G.J.V. Prasad uh, discusses life and literature at uh, Jawaharlal Nehru University, where he is professor of English and Director of the Jawaharlal Nehru Institute of Advanced Study. His major research interests are Indian literature, in Indian English literature, contemporary theatre, Dalit writings, Australian literature and translation theory. Prasad is also a poet and novelist. He is a recipient of the Katha Award for Translation from Tamil. He has co-edited with Sarah Rai a collection of stories from Indian languages, Imaging the Other. His academic publications, uh, publications include, among others, Continuities in Indian English Poetry, Nation, Language and Form, and recently published uh, Writing India, Writing English, and four edited volumes of critical essays. He is the editor of the Penguin, now Longman, study edition of Samuel Beckett's Waiting for Godot, and also of John Osborne's Look Back in Anger. He has also written a book of recipes, South Indian Vegetarian Kitchen, published by Roly Books. He is the current editor of JSL, the Journal of the School of Language, Literature and Culture. This paper will be read out by uh, Harish Trivedi ji. Uh, David Devidar is a novelist and publisher. He is the author of three novels, The House of... Three wonderful people associated with uh, Kushan Singh in different ways. We will begin with uh, Indu Banga, who has done a lot of work in and the history of the six, uh, which was a major area uh, to which uh, Kushun had made a very vital contribution. I know that she has been a critic of a lot of uh, histories of six written before, and maybe uh, she uh, she has 
something to say uh, critically also about uh, Krishna. Uh, uh, all of us know that that was one of his uh, most important, most serious and engaging uh, kind, uh, kind of works in scholarship. And uh, I think we will uh, begin with that paper, a discussion of uh, Krishan Singh's uh, 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 a history of the Sikhs. Yeah. Professor Kisajidanandan, the <coughs> chairman of this session, uh, Professor Tiwari, President of Taiti Academy, Professor Trivedi, Professor Prasad, my fellow panelist, distinguished participants, members of the Kushwant family, if I may say, and friends. We've had a delightful session, you would agree with me, with such evocative presentations at, in the inaugural session that I'm afraid mine would be a contrast, an absolute contrast to what you have heard. Prosaic, of course, but not very inspiring either. Uh, and I'm a bit diffident because of that, and I'm also overawed by the presence of so many distinguished literary figures in this hall. But what I share with you all is admiration for Pushwan Singh. And I think that could compensate for whatever I have to say about the history of the six, which was the theme given to me by Professor Trivedi. <clears throat> I feel honored by the invitation to speak in this seminar organized by the Sahitya Academy. I accepted Professor Trivedi's kind invitation as much out of regard for him as a senior academic as because of a sense of personal and professional obligation towards Kushwan Singh, whom I could meet personally only once in the late 60s. And he was my partner in the badminton mixed doubles in the Kasari Club. <laughs> We lost the match, but he was extremely supportive and kind, and I have treasured that memory. <clears throat> I recall once when I was appearing for my MA examination, one of my teachers advised me to learn to murder my favorites. And what did he mean by that? That is that if you wish to stay within the time limit allotted to you, which is 25 minutes on the outside, I would probably have to murder my favorite ideas as I go along. And I hope you would bear with me. <clears throat> Turning to the theme of the seminar, this paper is a revised version of the presentation made at the Punjab University, Chandigarh on Kushwan Singh's 99th birthday, exactly a year ago. Mr. Rahul Singh and my colleague, Professor Pushpinder Sayal, happened to be present on that occasion, but I assured them that this paper is substantially revised since then. Uh, it, it broadly focuses on, one, the historiographical context and scope of the history of the six, two, purposes and self-identification of the author. Three, his limitations and strengths as a historian. I may begin with the obvious that all historical research proceeds on the shoulders of others. Vitality and consistency of history as a discipline require periodic stock taking by its practitioners, which is generally called second order history. Such a reflection illumines historical reconstruction by addressing the categories in which a historian seeks to comprehend and interpret sources, the procedures used, and the assumptions that underlie the conclusions derived. Mine is a modest, though long overdue, attempt at such a reflection on Kushwan Singh's widely read history. This work may be placed in the larger context of modern historical writings on the six by Europeans and Indians, which by now is over two centuries old. Much of this historiography, until independence related to Sikh history from Guru Nanak to the annexation of the state of Ranjit Singh by the British in 1849, thus Kushwan Singh had a well-charted course 
for his first volume, which closes at the death of Ranjit Singh. In fact, he consciously looks upon himself as the successor of J.D. Cunningham, who wrote his classic history of the Sikhs after the First Anglo-Sikh War. Kushwan Singh set out to revise Cunningham's account in the light of later researches. Quote, he's using this expression, taking the narrative beyond 1846 down to the post-independence period as the first writer of a general history of the Sikhs in colonial and post-colonial times. However, Kushwan Singh has a challenging task of charting his own course on the basis of archival records and a variety of sources within and outside India. <coughs> Through these two volumes, thus, he becomes the first writer to cover nearly five centuries of Sikh history. Thanks to his uncanny instinct for the significant, his outline has generally been followed by the later writers, though not necessarily all his assumptions and conclusions. <coughs> Now I'll briefly, briefly refer to its publishing history. Kushwan Singh produced nearly half a dozen volumes on Sikh and Punjab history. His first such work brought out by the Harper Collins in 1952, it's titled The Six, became the basis of a handsome grant from the Rockefeller Foundation to pursue a research project sponsored by the Aligarh Muslim University. <coughs> An outcome of this three-year-long study was his two-volume history of the Sikhs, from the birth of Guru Nanak to the aftermath of independence and partition. It was originally published by the Princeton University Press in 1963. Its Indian edition was brought out by the Oxford University Press in 1977. It had eight impressions by the time the paperback edition, revised paperback edition, came out in 1991. The latest edition brings it to 2004, and its 17th reprint came out in 2014. It's an extremely impressive printing history, or publishing history, if you like. <clears throat> but I'm using mostly the 1991 edition, which has seven picture plates, eight maps, and 14 useful appendices running over 125 pages, which enhance its value for scholars. This well-documented and profusely annotated history subsumes most of Kushwan Singh's work on Sikh and Punjab history.